Hey pottery people, welcome back to another virtual pottery video. It's Sarah from Taylor Art Studio. Today we're gonna make a spooky candle. So this is my version of something that I found on Pinterest and the supplies you're gonna need are clay, a rolling pin, a cylinder mold, slip, and of course your clay tools. So when you're working with slabs, of course, you need to roll your slab out first. Sometimes it's good to allow the slab to stiffen up a little bit before you try to put it around something, but I'm just going to roll with it here, pun intended. Um, I'm using a pool noodle as my cylinder mold. It is by far my favorite thing to use um, because it's squishy and you don't have to worry about it getting stuck to your clay cylinder. Some of the cardboard rolls that we use are can be difficult to get your clay off of after it's been drying for a little bit. So the ends of the slab I am cutting at an angle so that when I put it together they'll meet nice and even and not have a big lump there. And I worked out the seam on the outside with the noodle still in inside the clay and then now I'm working out the seam on the inside and I'm holding my hand around the outside to stabilize it so I don't warp it. Now I'm going to use those extra pieces of slab that I cut off to cut a circle for one end of my slab or one end of my cylinder. So I need to make sure that it's at least big enough to cover the top of my cylinder but I'm going to make it slightly bigger because I'm going to have it kind of slump into the cylinder a little bit because ultimately what my um, candle is going to do is it's open-ended on the bottom and then it's gonna have like this kind of little bowl at the top so I can put a fake tea light on the inside to illuminate his face and then a fake tea light on top to pretend like it's a candle, like a real candle. So yeah, sorry for the off-camera action here. I'm just smoothing that circle slab onto the top. And then there you go, there's the top of it. So it kind of has a little bowl at the top. And then you're going to wait for your slab to get leather hard before you go cutting holes. Don't be like me and cut them too soon because they're, they don't cut very clean if you don't wait for it to dry. So after it's leather hard, then you can cut, start cutting your holes and adding your facial features. The closed end with that circle slab kind of bowl at the top, that should be the top of your spooky candle. So first thing that I'm going to make is my nose. When I make noses, I like to start with a, I like to make it with a tapered coil, um, like a carrot shape. So it's going to be small and pointy on one side, on one end of it, and then it's going to be um, fat and thick on the other end of it. So I'm going to make like a, like a, carrot shape. So I'm flattening out the one side of it, just kind of patting it on a flat surface so that it'll sit nicely onto my cylinder when I'm done. And I'm kind of pulling at the bridge of the nose to thin it out a little bit. And now I'm just using the a rounded wooden clay tool to press up into the nostrils to make those holes. Now at this point, if you are like, this is good enough for me, like that's totally fine and that can be your nose, um, but I'll spend a little bit more time sculpting it and working, working it out to make it look a little bit, a little bit more realistic. Sometimes I like to, I've done a few facial kind of portrait sculptures before, so I'm Obviously, I'm not stupendous at it, but you know, I've gotten better at it the more that I've done. But if you struggle with making, if you want to make a portrait sculpture and you struggle with those facial features, either have a picture of a person and maybe some different angles of the face 
in front of you while you do it, or maybe on your computer screen, or you can have a mirror set up in front of you and you can use your own face as a model so you can see all of those uh, weird shapes on the face and the places that are higher and lower where the face changes angles all of that so that you know having a mirror in front of you um, can help you a lot when you're doing these um, portrait kind of sculptures so again, I'm just working out the nose. Anything that I add on to my cylinder, I'm going to smooth it onto the cylinder so that the, the seam where it was added on isn't visible. Um, if you leave it, if you just kind of slip and score and stick it on there, it might, it probably will stick and stay, but you're safer to smooth it on as well so it doesn't end up falling off during the drying or firing process. All right, now I'm gonna do my angry eyebrows. You don't have to make your spooky candle angry if you don't want to. It can be a silly spooky candle, but mine's gonna be kind of an angry yelling guy. So there's my eyebrows. Those again are tapered coils, but they are both, they're tapered on both ends. So both ends are small. And then the middle is the, the larger part. So I'm gonna smooth those out and onto my cylinder. And I like the, I really like using these rounded wooden tools for stuff like this too. Um, it makes, it's a, it's a lot better for smoothing things on than your finger. It's a little more nimble. Um, you can get into smaller spots and I actually really like the tool marks that it makes. So I'll probably leave those tool marks there. And here we go, I'm gonna make the mouth. So those are just those lines that come down from the sides of your nostrils, where your cheeks are. And I'm gonna draw, kind of draw it out before I, before I add anything to it. Now I cut my mouth out, he's got a frowny face. And then I'm gonna cut out some tiny pieces on the top there. Um, some tiny rectangle shapes almost to make him some teeth. He's gonna have some gnarly creepy teeth. And if you're like, no way, I don't want to do teeth, that's too tedious, um, don't have to do it. I just really like the way three-dimensional sculptural teeth look. How they just kind of hang there it's very funny to me so I'm cleaning it up and I'm also cleaning up on the inside again um, because I am an impatient potter I don't always let things dry as much as I should so as I'm cutting some of this stuff out there's like little boogies that are hanging out on the inside there so I'm cleaning those up as I go too because you know sometimes those little pieces um, can be really sharp after it's fired so I don't want anything um, dangling around on my pot that could cut me later and you guys are probably thinking like why is Sarah doing a Halloween project it's not even September yet well I love Halloween first of all and second of all uh, with the way things are right now, if you want to make some Halloween decorations, I would recommend you start ASAP because, you know, it may take a little bit of extra time for things to get fired and finished. So if you want something by Halloween, I'd go ahead and get it, get it started now. That way you'll definitely have it. All right, now I'm going to add some extra clay coils um, for the cheeks there around the mouth and then I'm adding a really small thin coil on top of the teeth so that it looks like a lip and I'll just sculpt that and smooth it onto my cylinder and again look at those tool marks I love those tool marks they're very gestural and I really enjoy that And 
then I'm going to add some clay there for the cheekbones. And just keep smoothing that stuff on until I'm happy with it and until I like where all the tool marks are. And I'm going to do a little bit extra to his eyebrows to make him look mad, even more mad. And then a little bit down at the bottom, underneath his bottom lip for his chin. All right, and then I'm gonna get my slip out. And the slip is, all I did was take some bone dry clay um, and put it in some water, covered it with water and let it sit overnight. And then I just whisked it. Um, I'm not doing anything crazy with it where I need it to be super smooth so there's no need to sieve it or anything like that for this. So all I did was take a whisk to it to make it not super chunky but I'm gonna leave it pretty gloppy because I'm gonna take it on a paintbrush like this and I'm gonna scrape the paintbrush along the top edge there and then shake it a little bit so that so that it drips and it'll end up looking like this, so it's gonna look like fake dripping wax. And then, so next week what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the little candelabra stand to go underneath it. And thanks everybody for watching. I hope you're all staying safe and staying inspired.